Oh, hello everyone and uh, welcome to this webinar on finance as it should be building from the ground up. I'm Viran Patel, Workday's Financial Services Industry Advisor and I'm pleased to be joined by Chris Regent from McGillan Partners and Collaborative's Graham Cobb who will share their insights and experiences around how do you build a finance function from the ground up, what technology will enable you to do that and what is good practice in deploying that technology. And for the audience today, please add your questions in the chat and we'll pick these up towards the end. But first of all, Chris, Graham, please can you introduce yourselves and your organisations? Chris, if we could start with you, please. Certainly. Uh, thanks very much, Vern, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Vern said, my name is Chris Regent. I'm the Group Head of Finance at McGillan Partners. And for context, McGillan Partners are a startup uh, insurance broker. We've got about 250 employees in the books now. We had a lot less than that when we started this project. Um, we started trading October 19, and I was responsible for uh, sort of delivering the project, but also various elements of its design. Thanks, Chris. And, and Graham, over to you. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Graham Cobb. I'm Finance Functional Architect with Collaborative. Uh, and as well as being a, a Workday partner, we're a premier consultancy using Workday and complementary technologies to power finance and HR transformation. Well, thank you both and uh, welcome to this session. So, look, a bit of scene setting. Chris, um, McGill, towards the end of 2019, made the decision to deploy Workday. Can you share what the business drivers were behind the project? Yes, yeah, certainly. So if you think about what I just said about being a startup, you know, the entity came into existence or entities in May 19. We started trading October 19. We had nothing but, you know, Microsoft Office products at that point, no general ledgers, no systems per se. We were quickly building a sort of spreadsheet legacy, so we needed something in place as soon as possible so that we could get off our spreadsheets into a proper system. Um, so we really needed something that was quick to set up, which would enable us to grow. You know, at the time we were less than 100 heads. We we're going to be north of 500 heads in three or four years. Um, we need to be able to grow, uh, you know, with the, with the business so that we could implement it one time and not have to keep bolting things on uh, in the future. So that led us down, you know, the normal RFP route, but Workday was the uh, was the standout um, provider for us. Uh, great, thank you. And what did you see as the key Workday differences compared to what you, uh, you know, the process that you went through and maybe what you've experienced before in previous roles? Yeah. Well, yeah, I put in three or four ERPs now thinking about it over the last sort of 10 years. I mean, one of the first things I would say is that Workday were very flexible to our needs. Um, they were very quick to be able to, you know, come back and answer questions. They were very good at presenting themselves, probably much more human, if I can use that expression, than a lot of other sort of the more uh, established, if I want to call it that, uh, ERP solutions. And they just sort of gelled better with us as a, as a team, I think, as a, on a human scale. Clearly, you know, an organization of our size is not, you know, going to be breaking the barriers of what they can do from a technology point of view, but we like the way they could flex up easily. We like the way it was all cloud-based. We didn't want any, you know, on-premises server type applications. I think that's, you know, the market's mostly gone that way anyway, SaaS-based. Um, but that future-proofing was really, was really key. And, you know, out of the box, could we use the process and systems without having to tinker with things, adapt them, um, you know, beyond all recognition from what Workday would recognize and have a whole IT ecosystem keeping it running? The answer to that was yes. So we, uh, we went with Workday. Great. And so that sounds like agility and scalability were, were key for you there. Yeah. And, and Workday themselves recommended Collaborative as your deployment partner. What stood out for you when working with them through the initial phase, the, the, the planning phase? Yeah, I mean, like you say, we were we were given collaborative, as it were, and um, that was a very good choice from work, I have to say. They obviously sort of saw the people that we were, saw the people that were working at collaborative and, and knew that we'd work well together, and we did. We had a very good team on, on both sides. So very much like-minded partner, I'd probably sort of categorise that as. They were clearly very knowledgeable of the system, you know, ins and out, very good at challenging us on what we thought the right thing to do and how to build the system. Clearly lots of experience in projects of this scale and size and, and actually speed. Um, but the focus was always on, you know, what can we deliver to you as McGill and what do you need rather than this is what Workday does, you need to uh, do it this way, which was, which was very helpful. Right, so the right cultural fit as well as having the right, right skills as That's well. That's right, yeah. yeah. Great. So with McGill's business drivers and with Collaborative as your partner, can you tell us a bit about the vision that you set out for this project? 
Yeah, well, one of the, I mean, one of the advantages of being a startup, obviously, is you're starting with a blank sheet of paper. So we were absolutely determined not to, you know, we as a finance team, were determined not to repeat the mistakes of the past that we'd all seen in prior organisations when you're dealing with legacy systems. Now, they may not be mistakes when they were put in, but they, they might be 10 years later. So we, we came with a sort of blank sheet of paper mentality. What would we want it to what you know in an ideal world, how do you want a finance system to operate? How do you want your chart of accounts to look? How do you want your workflow around AP, et cetera, et cetera? What's the ideal solution? And then make sure that when you've designed that, it's flexible enough to, to grow by five, ten, even a hundred times if it's if, from a revenue driver point of view, to make sure that you've got that that build for the business of the future, not just as it is today. And that was that was a real vision. We're building something today which we want to take out of the box but we don't want to have to keep coming back to it in 12, 24, 36 months time to refresh, to build again for a bigger business. Right. Okay, so I understand the business drivers, the, the flexibility for growth. I understand why you chose Workday and the vision of the project. And, and I want to ask about the project itself. So we can go into that a bit more. So Graham, I understand the project timelines were tight. Um, if you can explain, explain that please. And what did that mean for project delivery? Yeah, so uh, as Chris has already said, speed was one of the um, most important factors for McGill as a business, standing up a system that was going to help them scale, but doing it quickly. And um, the first meeting that I sat down in to talk about the McGill plan, the question was, how quickly can we do this? Uh, the end answer, because I'm sure everybody wants to know what that is, is we went live with finance in 23 weeks, start to finish, but that included a two week break for Christmas holidays because everybody needed a, a little break. Um, following on from HCM going live in 14 weeks, and we could potentially have done that even faster, but I think it's fair to say that probably would have stressed the McGill team uh, too much to do that. Um, so looking at what we needed to do to, to get that timelines working. Really, it was about focusing on pragmatic decisions, outcomes, and phasing the work in such a way that the testing wouldn't take the more effort than the McGill team had available to contribute at that point in the project. Okay, thank you. So, and, and to carry on with you, Graham, um, Chris talked about not having any legacy systems, legacy systems or legacy processes as well, it's a blank sheet of paper. How did that impact the solution design and decision-making process and, and your approach uh, as an organization? Uh, if anything, it made the decision-making process even easier because it was purely pragmatic. There was no legacy to talk about. Um, we've always done it this way as a, a discussion that frequently comes up. It meant that we could talk about what did McGill need? Where did they want to be now and where did they see themselves in the future and then we could start solutioning around that desire and then come up with uh what we're going to have today okay thank you uh, i suppose that the question that most people want to will want to ask is what challenges did you encounter during the project graham if we could stick with you on, on, on that sure so I, I guess the the challenge that everyone will be aware was was COVID hit. We went live uh, at the end of April, um, cut over early April, but live in the end of April. So we were completely locked down at that point. Um, we were used to working very closely together in the same room. We did testing sessions where the McGill team would work, walk five minutes down the road from their office to ours, and we'd be set up in the same room testing, fixing things in real time. So transitioning to that remote delivery, whilst we're used to it, it, it took some time to bed in. Um, and really that cutover was probably the challenging thing doing that remotely. Okay, thanks. And Chris, what were the challenges that you saw that you had to kind of overcome during the project? Yeah, well, I mean, Graham is right about, about COVID. I mean, I think the biggest issue for us was, was getting the right resource in place. You know, as I've said a couple of times, we were a startup organisation, finance at, at the point of departure, and this was maybe four people. Um, and they all had BAU jobs and a year end and a budget and et cetera, et cetera, to, to do at the same time. We didn't feel we could just go out and, you know, hire 
10 people to backfill as it were so we did have a lot of stress on the team um, but to be fair to both Workday and Collaborative they were very upfront with this is a resource you will need in week four in week five in week six it's one and a half FTEs here it's three FTEs there so we knew when the bumps would come between us and we could manage around that testing was the hardest part and there was a crunch period there and we maybe lost a week or so of time all down to us not down to Collaborative I have to say but you know the, the, the rigor of the week-to-week -week project meetings really got us over the line there um that those two issues you know the, the ft on our side and covid sort of putting us into a whole new world um were the biggest two that said we were very lucky that you know all the sort of online uh systems work for for both ends so we could work in, in remote as it turned out we could work you know relatively painlessly in remote uh, environments as we as we have been doing for the next for the last year okay thank you Graham, just going back to you on that, I mean, of course, COVID started. Did you have to change your approach midway for, for, for the project? You talk about testing. Uh, typically, we see testing in, in you know, kind of a, a particular phase. Did you have to change any of that as you went through? So I, I don't think COVID necessarily changed the approach, but it changed the dynamic of the way that we were, we were used to working together. Um, moving from face to face in the same room really stepping through things to going online halfway through the project was uh, the challenge rather than doing it online um, we've subsequently delivered two further phases into mcgill for other functional areas and features and we did those fully remote um, having the benefit of having worked with the the team face to face i think was beneficial there um, but it just goes to show that the methodology is solid whether you're face to face or fully remote right and can you just give us a bit more insight into those subsequent phases and, and rollout to you talk about right sure so uh, as we talked about the primary driver was speed um, so we went with the the launch methodology being focused on time to value and getting live with a solid foundation quickly. Therefore, what we did was we looked at the functional areas that McGill really needed to stand up quickly and focused on those for phase one. So you had your core general ledger, your suppliers, your banking, et cetera. Uh, then phase two, we supplemented that with procurement, uh, with business assets and with projects. And then we supplemented that further with adaptive planning in phase three, which we delivered in time for the budget cycle at the end of last year. Right. So it sounds like you quit to get value and get value as you're going through through the project. Um, adaptive planning, uh, just for those that don't know, is is Workday's planning tool. Um, so look, uh, one more thing on on we talked about challenges. Really, the other side of this then is what made this a successful project and why i know you talked a bit about that already but if we can get into that a bit more chris just want to get your view on that yeah well, i mean the first mark of success obviously is on time on budget i mean tick there so that was good um the uh, the, the things that really made it work were two twofold one this was not a project that was done to the finance team. They built it themselves. They were heavily involved in the design of it, the testing of it, the implementation of it. They weren't just given it as a sort of wrapped package at the end. So everyone was A, very familiar with how it worked, but also B, what they were trying to achieve with it. But also, you know, when you start with a blank sheet of paper, and that's not just from a technical point of view, but from a mindset point of view, what is the right thing to do here? And you're willing to be challenged by, in this case, collaborative, as to well why do i need a chart of accounts to look like that just because i always have does it mean it has to be like that if you come with that open mindset then you, between that and having people involved from an early stage that to me is what made this project a successful one um you know like i say on time and on budget so you know it was it was two big ticks in the box um for me from that point of view yeah and within 23 weeks to be on time and yeah, budget that, that's quick. very impressive yeah graham any more you can add to that any more flavor to that Sure, I, I think um, everybody was focused on the best outcome. Um, having the discussions, as Chris said, not having that legacy to hold you back, let you really look at what the right thing to do was. Uh, there was a lot of knowledge in those rooms, in those design sessions, uh, and we could really get into a deep discussion around what was the right thing to do for Miguel. 
and then that's kind of the, the key, I think, here to a successful project. Wait, Graham, you may have lost you. Have you lost me? I'm still can here. I can see you both. Did you get my answer, Chris? I did. Sorry, could, I think we just cut out there, Graham. I'm not sure if that was me. Apologies if that was. I think it was yeah, just you, Vera, and Chris heard my answer. Um, okay. It was about focusing okay. on the right outcome. Okay, great. Um, so I think we just had some kind of Wi-Fi surge in the household, so apologies. But look, um, clearly a very successful deployment and great to hear, and great to hear that everyone from McGill was involved. You don't normally get that level of buy-in typically on, 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 on projects. So now I just want to focus our attention on post-deployment. So Chris, since going live, you've recently been through your first year end and the budget cycle. How was that? And can you just also explain how well, what value Workday has delivered through that process? Yeah, so those two things are true. We've also doubled in size while we've been in lockdown from an FTE point of view, at least. So you know, if you think about the scale of the business in terms of operational scale, the business has doubled. We've done a year end. We've done a month end, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's a cliche, but, you know, year end should be like any other month end. Um, and actually it was. So while we, you know, it took a little bit longer to close the books, that was nothing to do with work. That was to do with us changing bonus pools and all those other things that accountants mess around with at the end of the year. So I think the, the great thing about this was we could rely on the workflows. We'd seen them working for the six months, whether that was, you know, as simple as T&E and AP, even when you got double the people, obviously T&E pretty small, but the AP workflows. We could see all the bookings on the architecture working it was just another month end and that was a that was a much easier process for us the fact that it was integrated particularly on the staff cost side with the hcm function means that we're, con we're not doing any of that reconciliation work between you know headcount in hr is 20 in this cost center why have we got 24 what's the right answer it all just seamlessly flowed through so you spend a lot less time creating numbers and a lot of time a lot more time analyzing them and, and that's where the value to the business comes you know in from a sort of day one delivery point of view yeah. just a couple of points to pick up because i know we've had conversations previously but one of the things i want to pick up on is dimensionality with work uh, your, your finance data model and the flexibility uh, uh, around that and of course workday is slightly different if you can just kind of give us your insight and view on on that yeah, so previously in, in you know in prior roles, whenever we needed to add dimension in prior firms, I should say, whenever we need to add dimensionality to an ERP or a general ledger, it would mean massively expanding cost centers or charts of accounts or what have you. You don't need to do that in Workday. You've got these work tag options, which mean that you can really expand the quality of the data inside the general ledger without getting going down rabbit holes of, you know, reams and reams of different structures. And that's been invaluable. Thing. An analysis of expenses, for example, is very, very useful. Um, we don't really have a great fixed asset register or that kind of thing. But if we're trying to do any kind of analysis, that dimensionality really gives, really is just able to pluck um, the relevant information very quickly as, as, uh, as and when it's needed. Great. So I can see how that can help as your business moves and changes, especially when you're going through year end and budget cycles to capture new new measures. The, the other point right. I wanted to pick up on is is really the auditor viewpoint. Again, we talked about this. I mean, how has that now changed in your view? How are you now enabling, if you like, auditors to get better access to, to information? Yes. So the, the idea with the auditor access is that you give them access to the system, point them in the right direction and off they go. We'll see if it's exactly that smooth in a couple of weeks when they when they turn up. But that's exactly how it should be. Rather than here's a big A4 file of printouts and you know go and tick that to that so the idea is that they can essentially get ahead of the curve which means bothering us less which keeps us you know doing our day jobs rather than constantly talking to auditors um let's see how that transpires but i'm pretty hopeful having seen the having seen you know the system so far yeah well, hope, hopefully uh, that, that works out now we talked about adaptive as well which is of course workday's planning tool can you just explain a bit more about how you were able to get value out of uh, adaptive planning, especially through your budget uh, cycle. Yeah, so we're, a, you know, as I mentioned at the top of the uh, webinar, we're a P-backed uh, startup, and you know they really at this point care about two things: revenue and how much cash they've got to put into the business every quarter. So having a good handle on those two data points 
is very, very important. Having a good handle on cash means having a good handle on cash flow. And having a good handle on cash flow means understanding your P&L and balance sheet, so you're all triangulating. We did have pre-adaptive, an enormous Excel model, which was riddled with errors, like all enormous Excel models are, and mm. gave you know decent-ish answers. But you always had one eye on the accuracy of the information. And of course, it wasn't very flexible. It was just an Excel spreadsheet. Moving to adaptive, I mean, even a real world example today, I get a call from the head of HR wanting to look at you know, headcount projections. I'm a few clicks of the button away to say, this is what we've got. You, told, you, know, you thought it was this number. Why, you know, why, why have you got that difference? And because you know, of some legacy PowerPoint that they've had in the past. But all the data is very easy to get hold of. It's not, can I find a file that I saved down in Excel from you know, three months ago, et cetera, et cetera. So you've got that real, you know, clickability and drill down function, which you get in adaptive to go from here's a number on an income statement all the way down to cost centers and legal entities and the drivers of that number and the inputs to that number. And it's all very quick to happen. So that, that again, takes out all of that, creating the number work to real analysis and being able to, you know, give information very quickly to the, uh, to the exec. Okay, th thanks. So look, to stick, uh, to carry on with, with you, what we, you just mentioned HR, we're focusing here on finance, but it's important to call out, of course, that you did implement a workday platform that includes HR. Now you just talked about uh, one or two benefits there, but what other benefits has that given to you in finance of being on the same yes. platform? Yeah, so we're on the same platform. We also use Workday for payroll, which is very helpful. So, you know, the, the true benefit of Workday is it really is an integrated system. So, again, you know, if I think back to the RFP process, where others claimed they were integrated, when you sort of scratch the surface, they were really sort of two separate systems, which had a module that you just sit across the top and pull data out of both. This is a real live integrated system. So when, when HR, you know, open up a new role, that feeds into our adaptive model. When they hire someone, their cost information feeds into our financials. We don't need to do any of this backwards and forwards and figuring out, did we ask that question? Have we got the latest information from HR? If it's in, the, if it's in their tool, it's in our tool because it is just one tool. And that's very beneficial and gets rid of all that reconciliation noise that you know, most finance functions have to go through and certainly I've suffered with in the past. Yeah, and important for your business when the large cost base of your business is, is Yeah, 80% of our cost of people, exactly. Yeah. Right, thank you. And Graham, it seems that McGill have all workday areas covered: HR, payroll, finance, planning. Is there anything else to cover? Is there anything else left? Well, you know, with the twice yearly releases, there's always extra things that you can bolt on. Um, really, that's going to depend on on where Chris and the team want to take the the business in the future. One thing that I think that is probably worth exploring is accounting center, which is freshly out. Um, McGill currently bring all of their revenue information into Workday as journals. So I think uh, a, a accounting center could add some value there. Thank you. And, and to that point then, Chris, about you know where do you want to go? What is McGill's roadmap for the future? What does it look like? And, and how will Workday support you in that journey? Yeah, so we're in rapid growth mode as we have been since we started. I mean, that that should sort of slow down to you know certainly from a year-on-year -year variance point of view by the middle of next year. So this year is about consolidating what we've built. Particularly, you know, we've we've gone live with a lot of tools in 2020 while growing the business. So we need to get a little bit of stability in place across Workday and Adaptive. Make sure that. We're comfortable with everything that's coming out at this point we've got no reason to believe that that wouldn't be the case i think accounting center probably does have a place for us our sort of mentality if you like or our culture is around having as few human beings in high value roles rather than people churning out data so we want to sort of optimize the technology wherever we can to do that and that's not just in finance that goes across the firm so to the extent that accounting center means we're not having to have people post journals and it gives us a real benefit we'll of course look at things like that great thank you chris so, so jointly you have successfully uh delivered on the on the project vision and thank you both for sharing that i mean what would be good is to really hear what are your key takeaways for the audience today Chris, if we can just stay with you on that. Please. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the biggest single one has to be come with a, a blank sheet of paper mentality. I mean, easier said than done when you've got lots of legacy systems, clearly. And, you know, if you've got lots of entrenched views, like I say, we're a startup. Everyone was, you know, new, even though, even though they had, you know, between 
five and 20 years experience or more in finance. But come with that blank sheet of paper. If you were unencumbered, how would you design your finance system? And then be willing to be challenged on that by you know, Graham and his team to say, OK, well, you think you want to do it that way. Are you sure? And if, you know, Graham will have some good ideas, the collaborative team will have some good ideas that will streamline, or we found streamline your processes. So do that, take the process out of Workday's box as much as possible. So we, we took, we had a lot of very basic processes before we put Workday in, but we again made a design uh, decision, which would be if Workday has a process, we will adopt that process and, and McGill will change to fit that process. So just the basic workflows around T&E and AP and banking and what have you. It's a lot easier to take something out of the box and not want to modify it. And you get much better support, I think, long term from, uh, you know, Workday and, and Collaborative when you're not, you know, customizing things to the nth degree. Workday gave us in way more detail than we actually needed from that point of view. So we, we never at any, any point wanted to customize anything. But if you go with that mindset of take it out of the box and come with a blank sheet of paper, I think those are the two things that I would, uh, that I would wave a flag at. Great. And Graham, your key takeaways for the audience? I think I've got three key takeaways. So number one, focus on what matters most. Don't get put off by trivialities around uh, the side. Number two, be open to new ways of doing things. Don't get too hung up on legacy. The the success that we've seen with this project is so driven by focusing on that blank sheet of paper methodology. And, and thirdly, I think Chris touched on it as well. Keep it simple. There's there's no necessary requirement to make something really complicated and the maintenance ongoing will be so much easier if you've kept it simple. Great, thank you. Well, look, thank you both. And, and what I summarise from this conversation is that McGill now has an impressive technology foundation in which to build and grow or flexibly build and grow. And they've been able to drive value for the business through their partnership with collaborative. So, now I think it's a good time to uh, take questions from the audience. So let's gonna look at the uh, chat and see what we have. So there's a couple of questions here around um, about reporting and data insight. Graham, maybe this is something that you, you can pick up. You know, how did you approach reporting and, and getting better analysis with Workday? So at the core of reporting is designing the foundation data model correctly. That's the dimensionality or the work tags that Chris was talking about earlier. Um, because if you design that correctly, you get those work tags on your data as the transaction is entered. And really that makes the reporting very easy to fall out at the end. Uh, we've delivered a fairly comprehensive suite of financial and headcount reporting to the, the McGill finance team, which I know they're using extensively every month. And really that is all powered by that foundation data model, which they focused on getting right up front. Okay. And maybe just a, a bit to add on to that, Chris, to, to your, uh, over to you. In terms of the tools that Workday and, and Graham and his team provided for you. How different were they to what you've seen seen before? Well, I mean, the first thing I'd say is they're very simple. Well, I don't mean I mean that in a positive way, not a negative way. They were simple to use, simple to understand, and clear on the page. You weren't having to take you know reports and then twist them into a pretzel to get the answer that you needed. So that kind of clarity, we 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 built a sort of suite of seven standard out the box reports: P and L balance sheet, cash flow, headcount various other ones I can't run off the top of my head, which were our go-to reports. We take those, now we've got our management accounts. There was, there was none of this kind of, you know, trying to trying to get data out of a system, dump it into Excel, do a whole load of, you know, V lookups and pivot tables and all those horrible things you normally have to do to get the answer. You could very much take these reports and they would form the basis for that, for that management reporting. Right, thank you. There's a couple of questions just around the theme of, uh, and Chris, maybe this one, uh, really for you is how how has uh, this platform enabled you to add value or you know uh, uh, provide the right data or enable the rest of the organization if you can just give some yeah. viewpoints I guess from a kind of short short term point of view 
we are now able to click buttons and get answers rather than look at spreadsheets or you know ask questions uh, ask questions from various people that's an obvious you know we've gone from nothing to a system um but we are spending less time creating numbers and more time analyzing them and i think that is key so we're adding value from that point of view we're not you know sitting at home now rather than office churning a handle to produce the number the number is you know largely there from the inputs as graham described from the foundational data model ultimately and long term a quality erp you know from our point of view when our private equity backers look to exit a quality erp will add add to the multiple or at least not subtract from it so that's where the, you know the long-term value comes if you have a quality system in the background the value comes at that point the the people that do due diligence on us will see that we have good controls good processes etc and that will help the valuation of the business and you know workday will obviously be very uh, very instrumental when it comes to that period in x and reviewers time Thank you. We don't have any more questions, so I think it's a good time to close now. And I want to say thank you to the audience for attending this insightful uh, session. And also a big thank you to you, Chris and Graham, for sharing your experiences with us all today. So thank you all and um, bye.